Okay, chapter five, bisectors of triangles. Um, we did a perpendicular bisector when we, um, we did the construction the other week. Uh, but now we've got four new vocabularies that we're gonna use today. Um, concurrent lines. A concurrent line is where three or more lines meet. Um, and where they do meet is called the point of concurrency. When you put those three lines inside of a triangle, so in other words, when you do a perpendicular bisector of each of the sides, where they meet is called the circumcenter. Um, when you bisect angles inside a triangle and where they meet, that's called the incenter. Um, we're going to come up against these two words quite a bit over the next, this chapter, so don't worry about it if you don't quite get it at the moment, but you will as we go along. Okay, so here's sort of the beginning of it. Um, don't forget if it's a bisector, um, it doesn't necessarily always mean that it's going to bisect at right angles, but if it says that it's a perpendicular bisector, then straight away you've got these 90 degrees. Okay, and here's the theorems 5 1 and 5 2. Um, and again, it's this word in 5 2 converse. All right, so if you are proving um, the reverse, then you must write the converse of. Okay, and this is basic work from, uh, for example, one. Um, all it's asking you to find in this case is AB, which is this guy. Well, if AC, which is a reflective property, is a perpendicular bisector, um, so then that this must also be the same as this side, and that's why that is 4.1. Okay. So now you've got, you've done your example, now let's have a look at what you've got. Well, obviously question number one is relatively easy, but let's have a look at question number three. Question number three, um, your 10x minus five, in this case equals your 7x plus one. Okay, solve it down for x. So 3x equals six, x equals two. It's asking you to find LP, which is this distance here. So plug it into 10x minus 5. Well, 10 times 2 is 20. Take away 5 will give you 15. So LP equals 15. You know me, that's actually solved the question that you've got to do. But plug it into the other side as well, just in case your algebra is wrong. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 1. So both sides are 15, which shows that your algebra is correct. It takes seconds, but plug it into both to check your work. Okay, now we're coming to the circumcenter, and as you can see, you're going to have three different types of triangle, acute, obtuse, and right, and look at where the circumcenter is. In other words, don't forget where three or lines meet, that's called um, circumcenter of those points, point of congruency. Okay, so if you think about it, this must bisect that line, this must be bisecting through that line, and this must bisect this, and they meet at P. Well, in an acute triangle, they meet inside. If it's an obtuse, as you can see, P is on the outside, and if it's a right, it's in the center of the hypotenuse. Um, try and remember them, they come into play quite a bit. So here's a typical type of question. Um, these are the ones like the, uh, the post office use, the mail delivery people to try and make their um, journey as quickly as possible. Um, it says that you've got three friends, A, B, C, and D. Where would the fourth, so they're the same distance from the other three, well, construct your triangle. Okay, and as you can see from the diagram, very quickly you find that it's an obtuse. And if you've got an obtuse triangle, it must be on the outside. So now what have you got to do? Well, let's start. Don't forget each one of these lines must be bisected. So if I bisect this line, we're coming down here. If I bisect this line, you're coming down here. And if you bisect this line, you're coming down here. So D is gonna be approximately somewhere there. Obviously, you'll be doing it on paper. You will get it more accurate than I do, but I'm not far off. 
Okay, the other week when we did angle bisectors, um, you constructed these as well. Remember where you constructed a triangle, you made an arc, you put your compass point on here and made another arc, your compass point there made another arc and then drew your line through. Okay, angle bisectors. Well, look at what happens. Um, if you draw lines down to each of the sides, you get right angles. So again, you've got this extra little bit of information. So, um, you know, as it says in here, um, you know, DF must be perpendicular to the line BD. So look for these extra little nuggets that you're going to come across as you go through this construction process. Okay, so here's example three. Um, what do you know? Well, obviously you've got these 241 degrees, which means you've got angle bisectors, and the distance from X to W is 7, so your distance from X to Y must also be 7. Okay, yes, you can put it into a proof, uh, but most of the time your algebra will cover what you need to do. Okay, so let's have a look at question number, uh, number five. Um, Again, you've got the thing here, look at your notation here, you've got a bisector, so PB is a bisector of angle CBA or ABC. Um, so if this distance from here to here is 8, then this distance must be the same, that's also 8. Question number 6, don't forget, question number 6 is the converse, remember? Because this time you're using the distances, which proves that this guy must also be 23 degrees. Alright, question 7. Um, go back to question five, these two lengths from here to here and here to here must equal each other, so you've got 2x plus 2 must equal 4x minus 8. Okay, so solve, so I'm going to subtract 2x and I'm going to add 8, so 2x is going to equal 10, so x is going to equal 5. Plug it back in again to make sure it's correct. So 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12, so this guy is 12. Can we prove it? Absolutely. And now we're going to prove it into this one here, so 4 times 5 is 20, 20 take away 8 will also give you 12. As those two equal each other, you know your algebra is correct. Okay, the in-center theorem, alright, this time you're bisecting your three angles to find your point of concurrency okay um, and by when you're bisecting angles by definition all the time your in center must always be with inside the triangle okay typical type of questions that are asking about this um, it's asking you to find jf by the pythagorean theorem well bearing in mind we're looking at this triangle to start off with um, and if you see um, the in center, which means that this distance from here to here must be the same for all three. Um, so using that definition, using Pythagoras, the reverse of the converse of Pythagoras, remember? Okay, plus or minus nine when you've done all your working, because it's actually a multiplier of a three, four, five triangle. Um, so if this is nine, every one of these must also be nine. Um, when you take the square root of something, don't forget you've got plus or minus, which in this case is plus or minus 9. There is no way you're going to get a negative distance at the moment, so make sure you take the positive root only. Okay, so here in question number 8, um, you're, it's asking you to find the distance of JQ, which is this guy. Well, let's draw that triangle. So... Um, and I'm talking about this J, P, and Q triangle. Well, what do we know? We know for a start that it's a right angle triangle, so that's where Pythagoras comes into play. Um, we also know that J, P is 16.5. We know from this side that Q, P must also be 9. So we're after X, which is the, hypothesis, uh, the hypotenuse. So your working out is going to be 16.5 squared plus 9 squared um, and when you do all the math eventually you'll get down to 